It's the Ross Tucker Football Podcast. <laughs> oh, yeah, it is. But it's not just any Ross Tucker Football Podcast. It is a Monster Monday presented, as always, by DraftKings Sportsbook. Ridiculous codes they got right now for you guys. Whether it's the NBA or the U.S. Open, just do me a favor. Go to the DraftKings Sportsbook. Use the code Ross. You'll be very happy that you did. It's a new week, which means we'll have a new spread the word winner at Ross Tucker NFL, at Ross Tucker Pod, whether it's Twitter or Instagram, Facebook, it all counts. Trying to grow the Facebook. I know that sounds weird and like Facebook's older people. I, I don't care. I want to say 10,000. I want to have 10,000 fans or friends or whatever they're supposed to be on Facebook. So let's make a push for 10,000 Facebook family members, whatever they're supposed to be. Sponsor confirmation email winner, including Raycon or My Front Page Story or DraftKings. And then we'll do the YouTube shout out later in the week as well. YouTube.com slash Ross Tucker NFL. So pumped up for today's show. We got to get into the Aaron Rodgers stuff. Now the Eagles have a new quarterback. We've got Jerome Baker getting a deal. But I wanted to have the perfect guest on for this time of year. I'm watching a lot of NBA playoffs. My Sixers are going to win the whole thing. I'm convinced it's going to be amazing. So I want to get a guy that, number one, is probably as good of an NFL-NBA crossover guy as there is because he's done a lot of NFL stuff, but now he's on TV with Shaq talking NBA. He also is a Sixers fan. He also is an Eagles fan. And I need to take his temperature there as well. Plus, I think there's a lot of people talking about the NFL kind of being like the NBA. I'm not sure that's necessarily the case. We'll find out from Adam Lefko from TNT and Bleacher Report momentarily. I do need to give a shout out to Larry Renacker, the latest patron. I love it. Patreon.com slash RT Media. Keep them coming. Keep them coming. Welcome to the party, Larry. It's Big Show time. The Big Show. All right, there's one other thing I have to say about today's guest, Adam Lefko. He also is newly married. Newly married. Congratulations, Adam. I put a ring on it, my man. It feels <laughs> weird. Yeah. So, so my, my new concern is I think the ring I got is too small, and I'm worried that I'm going to be one of those guys whose fingers, as they get older, gets really plump. And they, you look at the ring, and you're like, how did you ever get that on? That's my new fear. Dude, it's see, this is why I love Lefko, okay? Th this is this is the truth, all right? So I was still playing the NFL when I got married. I was going into my fifth year. Okay. So when I got sized for it, Adam, I was probably 310, 315, okay? Yeah. Meanwhile, fast forward, I have a uh a, I play a lot that year. I have a bad back. Ooh. They tell me, let it heal in the off season. Don't do anything. So all I did was eat and drink yingling right. back in Pennsylvania, trying to let it heal. It doesn't heal. So April 21st or whatever, a month before my wedding, I have a back surgery. So then mm -hmm. I'm really not doing anything. So I'll send you the picture sometime. The heaviest day of my life was my wedding day. I was 337 pounds. Pictures are glorious. Yeah, and my wife was so stressed out about marrying me and anxiety-ridden and whatever. She was 107. So, like, the heaviest day of my entire life mm -hmm. and the lightest day of her adulthood. Like, our daughters look at our video. We, we, we make it a point to watch the video with our daughters every year. We think that's yeah. important, like... Yeah. Hey, we love each other. It's important to remember that. Watch the wedding, the whole deal, right? And remember they just can't your believe dad it. was like the largest human you've ever seen. And they, they, they you just can't, you so, didn't dance. There's no, no way you were dancing. Well, here's the thing: I couldn't dance much because of the back surgery. That's so, like, I, I wasn't like I I wasn't like my normal like going crazy. Like the big man can move, right? I was just kind of doing more of this like the slide and the hips. I wasn't really like getting aggressive. Kevin but here's James. The thing. Type of My deal wife is – sorry, Adam, go ahead. I was going to say you're more Kevin James in yes. uh, Wilson. Yeah. Yes, yes. 
So, dude, you can see it clear as day on the video. Like, we can go to the video evidence, okay? This, by the way, everybody needs to get a manly band. I'm not remembering my code right now, but manly bands. Get, get a manly band. So, my wife, like, we put on each other's rings. It was, like, part of our we, – we memorized our um, vows. Yeah. And then part of it is, like, you put the ring on the other one. So, I get my wife's finger, no problem. She gets my finger. She has the band, and it's like, yeah, there's like, no... like I almost had to like spit on the ring or my finger for her to be able to slide it on because my I was about twenty pounds heavier and I drank a lot the night before, so I was like swollen. Wow! And so she really had to struggle to get it on my finger. Fast forward. Yeah, you didn't take it off for years. Well, I I didn't take it off for a couple of years, and then. Uh, career ends in Washington. I hurt my neck. I go from 316 on August 27th when I get hurt. By New Year's Day, I'm 248. Okay? I went on a crazy diet. I was upset about football being over, whatever. My, my ring just slid. Like, I, I couldn't yeah. even keep it on my finger. So, I am the opposite of what you may be. I had to go and, like, they put more – like, they somehow they put more material in there. Oh. So that it fits. Like, so okay. I'm the opposite of you maybe having to get yours hollowed out more or resized. I had to get mine like shrunk or whatever, filled in. Yeah, I don't I don't want to predict that for myself, that I'm going to be a man with plump fingers. I just, I've always seen those guys. There's, just, there's certain things when you're a kid that you just don't understand. Like you see certain, like there are certain dudes that have huge heads. And my entire life, I've just been like, how did your head get that big? And you just, I, I guess I'm seeing it through my friends now, like the aging process. But like, you shake an old man's hand sometimes, and it's like a bear claw. And you're like, I, unless people were just like built dead back in the day, I just, I don't know if I'm going to be one of those guys. I'm trying to figure it out. A lot, uh, old men have like those beat up hands. I think a lot of times, yeah. like, like beat up and the skin on them. Anyway, um, dude, congratulations. <laughs> That's amazing on everything. Thanks. You've been having um, a great last couple of years with all the NBA stuff. Obviously you still have uh, the left go show, which I've been on before, yep. which is terrific at Adam left by the way, on Twitter. Here's, here's, here's what I wanted to have you on a couple of different reasons. I teased it earlier in the show. You now are the host uh, a couple days a week, whatever it is, on uh, TNT's pregame halftime. You're with Shaq and Candace and the whole deal. Um, my question for you is, what what does the NBA do better than the NFL? Like, it, it's obviously they're the two most popular deals, right? Like, we know that. What What is better about the NBA than the NFL, in your opinion? I'll answer this, but I'm just curious. When you say that, what are you immediately thinking about? Like when you asked me that question, what were you like? Oh, I like that about the NBA. Is it NBA social media? Is it the overall feeling of the league? Is it the way that the players are talked about? Like when you asked me that question, what were you specifically talking about? Well, first of all, I'm not sure I'm talking about anything. Okay. But the things that come to mind would be, the NBA social media, like the uh, the highlights and the clips, and it feels like they were way ahead on that. Yes. Um, it feels like a more advanced discussion on social media. And I would say, so because I've wondered this a long time, I think first and foremost, the fans of the NBA are less attacking than the fans of the NFL, just from my experience on social media. Also in the NFL, I find it to be a lot more team-based, where if you say something negative about the Steelers, the Steelers fans are coming at you, where in the NBA, it's much more player-based. And if you were to say something like, oh, I actually think that Austin Rivers is a bad matchup for Chris Paul, you're not going to have a wave of Austin Rivers fans coming at you. And at the same point, like you're not going to have a lot of Denver Nuggets like fan. Like it's, it's less territorial. It's less angry. At least what I've experienced online. Um, everything though is about the players where in the NFL, I think everything is about the teams, you know, in the NFL, we can name almost every owner 
If you and me went up and back right now, Jeffrey Lurie, Jerry Jones, Daniel Snyder, and in the NBA, there's a few, you know, like Mark Cuban, but not everybody knows the owner of the Bulls. You know, they know they know James Dolan, but like they don't know who the owner is of um shoot, I don't the Denver Nuggets. People don't know who that guy is. And so um I think it's so player centric. I think that the relationship with advanced analytics is further along. I think it's been adopted by uh you know MIT Sloan a lot like I feel like the NFL is starting to get there. I just feel like the NBA is maybe um has been in those arenas for a little bit longer and the NFL football like the NBA feels like a special version of basketball, but like the NFL is always fighting for football. You know what I mean? Like the NBA is worldwide. The NFL is like, we're going to have games in Germany. And then the NBA is like, we, what? Like we have games in every country and every part of the world. It's just a more worldwide sport. Um, but I, 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 the main thing that I think you're talking about, cause I've wondered for why are NFL fans online so angry? is usually my question. The NBA, it's like a shared experience. It's almost let's laugh at Danny Green going 0, and se- 0 for 7 together, where the NFL fans would be like, screw you, Philadelphia. You threw snowballs at Santa. Nobody likes you. And it's like, why are you talking like this? That's my take. Yeah, so uh, the, all of those things very interesting, some of which I don't, you know, I don't follow the NBA close enough to really right. know. I, I guess – you know, the one question I would have for you, the player movement stuff, right? Like, this guy doesn't want to be there. He's not going to do a new deal. He's going to be a free agent in 2024. So let's talk mm-hmm. about it for the next three years, where he's going to want to go or whether or not his team trades him before then. You have a unique perspective because you work for the NBA or in the NBA at least, but you also, you know, you're a fan and you're a fan of like the Eagles or you're a fan of teams. Do you think that's better or worse? Like for the league that kind of getting there in the NFL. I don't know that it is. Eh, I just watched Tom Brady move his way down to Tampa. I just saw Matt Stafford get himself traded to LA. I just saw Julio Jones say, Hey, I'm going to have to go play for Tennessee. Um, I saw Russell Wilson start trying to exercise that a little bit this offseason. I think the difference is in the NFL, the, the the careers are so much shorter because of injury and all that stuff that it's hard to really rely on certain players to do it. Where the NBA, it could be a 15-year career that kind of pushes it that far. Um, and one guy – I know what you mean, though, with the NBA. But um, I'm okay with it because – when it hits, like you're bringing up the Sixers, to go through the process and to get to where it is now has made it very sweet. To be the franchise that everyone crapped on and said, oh, you have eight wins, 10 wins, 15 wins, and like my, the, the, the shining part of my year to be the NBA draft lottery to see if somehow we were getting the top pick, to now – the Sixers are a final eight team looking like they're going to be a final four team. I think it's, I think it's special. And we're seeing with the Nets injuries yesterday with Kyrie and James Harden, it's wide open right now. And so I think that during the golden state run, when KD was there, it kind of felt uh, like a foregone conclusion right now, even though we have three stars on one team, this year is wide open. I mean, I could see the Suns, I could see the Nets, I could see the Sixers, I could see the Bucks, I could see the Clippers. So what I think is interesting is you're right about Brady and Stafford positioning it the way they did to be able to leave. And Julio. I think the difference is it was quiet and it was relatively abrupt, like quick and quiet. Whereas the NBA player moves are loud and long. Meaning- I will say I will say to defend them, I sometimes I I like to focus on this. I don't want to blame an athlete for the media's news cycle. Because what's happening now is when the players are three years from free agency, people are already doing podcasts. Is Giannis gonna leave? 
Let's write an article. Where could Giannis go in 2024? Let's put the, the best roster together. And I think sometimes we blame, like I've always, people are getting angry at Aaron Rodgers right now, but it's not his fault that ESPN's talking about him five hours a day. Like it's the same thing with LeBron. I think people hate LeBron, but he, because people are talking about him all the time and they're like, I want to get away from him. So I, I, that's my only thing. That's a really good point. So what I would say is I'm not blaming the players yeah. about that. I'm just comparing NBA to NFL. And it feels to me – so, like, as a guy, I don't follow a lot of NBA people on social media, if any, yeah. right? Like, yeah. I just I really primarily pay attention when it's the playoffs, okay? Especially if the Sixers are good. That's when I'm paying attention to the I NBA. But I see more, Adam, on my timeline, more conversation typically about NBA player movement yeah. than I do even about the games themselves or the sports itself. And I look, that might be a good thing. I'm sure it's helped the NBA. I, maybe the NFL needs more of that. Mm -hmm. I think the difference is also, too, like to your point, like NBA guys usually say healthy, play a long time. Like you can say – hey, this guy in two years, he's going to be a free agent. He's, he might go to the Knicks or whatever. Mm -hmm. And the NFL will be like, free agent in two years. Like, you know how much can happen to that guy mm -hmm. and that team in two years? Like, two years. Look at, look at where Le'Veon Bell was two years ago. And now look where he is now. It's like it, it doesn't even make sense. But to that point, I'm actually going to tap into my media brain. I have been working at Bleacher Report, I think, over eight years now, which is freaking crazy. And I've seen that company develop. I wasn't there when it was just lists, but a lot of lists uh, and, and seeing the different ways that they use search engine optimization, seeing the ways that we used headlines, um, figuring out what people wanted to talk about. Like when you see like the three X factors, like I remember when we were in rooms coming up with that shit, like it was, we, you were always, we called them hooks always looking for hooks to get people to watch our content and to view the content. And I think we're at a point now almost in the sports world where people are more excited about the off seasons in their sports than the actual seasons. I think that more people are interested in the draft, the NFL draft and NFL free agency uh, than they are during the season. I think during the season, they care more about their fantasy team than they do about the wild card race. Um, I think in the NBA, like you're saying, people are more excited. I think more people would watch a free agent special where guys announced what team they were going to than an actual playoff game. And I think uh, you're one of those guys, Ross, that enjoys watching football. And what I've realized by being in sports for damn near my entire life at this point not everybody enjoys watching the games. Like, I can't tell you the amount of times I've tried to watch football games with people and they're on their phones the entire time. Or they're asking me questions about things that are not on the game. Like, I have to, I have to watch the Sixers-Hawks game tonight. I have to do it on Twitter. And it's going to be with some people. And they gave me a rundown. And I was like, I'm not doing any of this. I was like, I'm watching the game. And we're going to talk about the game as we watch the game. I was like, this whole, like, let's do a TV show while we're watching live sports? Like, absolutely not. Like, I'm watching live sports. But I think people like to have debates. And 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 when it comes to things like the draft and the offseason, me and you can have completely diametrically opposed opinions, and neither of us are wrong because it's not it hasn't happened yet. But in a game... I get to call you an idiot, right? But people don't like that. They like to never be wrong. I don't know. I'm just vamping. You know, you're making a lot of good points. I almost wonder. So we all know the second screen is really important, right? Yeah. Like whatever that person has on their second screen, their phone, a lot of times it's phone, but second screen is really important. I, I think the younger you are, the more important the second screen is. And I'm not sure that like for people under 30, to your point, that the second screen isn't more important than the first screen. I, I think that there's a lot of young people today that are doing 
TikTok, Instagram, uh, whatever. Definitely, I, I heard you trying to get more Facebook audience. I don't know how many of them are using Facebook. Um, <laughs> but, but they're definitely swiping on TikTok. And then when they hear Mike Breen's voice raise an octave or Kevin Harlan start to yell, I think that's when they look up and they go, is he on my fantasy team? Like, I, like maybe I'm – and, of course, I'm dumbing a lot of people down, but um, – I don't know. I it's it's very interesting to, to to study people's viewing habits because I'm Ross. I've the reason that I got so into football when I came to Bleacher Report. I had mainly been covering college basketball in Louisville, Kentucky, and when I got there, I would just study with Chris Sims, and he would teach me everything. And so it was it was to me it was like going to college and learning about. And I would sit there and I go, "What do I watch?" I was like, I was like, I, I've watched football my whole life, but what do you watch? And so now I'm looking at protection schemes, and now I'm looking at, okay, how many blitzers is it going to be? And I'm, you know, and then when it came to the NBA, I sat there with Wade and Candace, and I was like, what do you guys focus on? And they're like, focus on the rotations, and like, don't always focus on the ball. Like, look at the matchups and the defenders. And I'm like, okay. And you begin to realize that it is a craft and that it is work and that we have kind of convinced ourselves that it's fun. And it is fun. Like it, it is a lot of fun. But to truly understand what's going on and then to talk about it, it is work. And uh, I just always assume that people want to consume sports at a high level. But I think a lot of people just kind of want it to wash over them and just and say, go team. Yeah, you know what? I'll be curious to see the reaction that I get to this interview, like whether, you know, email or social media or the patrons on, on our private Slack, yeah. like I'll be curious. Cause I do think age has a lot to do with it. And I do think, you know, my niece would have a much different perspective than my uncle, you know, mm -hmm. about this conversation we're having because they're like two polar opposites. And I think the NFL, like with the Nickelodeon thing, I think the NFL is trying to like figure it out. I'm, I'm sure they've got data and they're trying to figure it out. This always happens, man. I got to get you on again at some point. Like I, talk to I, him, I, I, I got like five other topics we could have gotten into, but I already took you longer than I said I would. Uh, go Sixers, go Eagles. You're the man. Subscribe to his show. Uh, the left go show. Is it just the left go show? Yeah. Left. Yeah. But you can just hit me up on social. At yeah. Adam. Hit him up on social at Adam left go. He's all over. Hit me up on Facebook. TNT Tuesdays. Yes. Trying to build my Facebook audience. Hit me up on Facebook. <laughs> Dude, I'm going to get made fun of just for that. But when I see a number no. like 8,800, I'm like, I don't care. I just want 1,200 oh. more. I don't care if I don't ever get anybody else more. Again, I want 1,200 I want 1200 more Facebook people. I don't even know what they're called. Let me see. They're Facebook called games. They're called Facebook friends, followers. Friend, but I don't have a friend page. I have a fan page. Mm. 8,500 people follow this. Follow my page. Anyway, follow me on Facebook. Follow Adam on social at Adam Lefko. Thanks, man. Good talking to you, man. Dude, he's awesome. I love conversations like that. I hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I did. Can't wait to get your reaction to it. By the way, you've got six days left to get a Father's Day gift. If you haven't yet, myfrontpagestory.com. Tell them Ross sent you myfrontpagestory.com. You literally say to your dad, hey, dad, I want to do something special for you. So I had a story written about you. I mean, he will love it. He might even act like he doesn't, but I've seen some of these videos we post on social media. He will love it. You will love the reaction. And then like even when you, you don't even know, he'll read it so many times, even when you don't know that he is, he's going to be hanging in his house somewhere. Trust me, myfrontpagestory.com. Tux Takes. Hey, Ross, good morning. Let's start with the latest with Aaron Rodgers, which is the comment from team president Mark Murphy that Rodgers is, quote, a complicated fella. So I think that this is probably accurate. Like Aaron Rodgers is kind of a complicated dude. Um, very smart guy, but you hear different things from different people. And he is a complicated guy. I don't, I don't think that that is a negative, but I think that a lot of people are 
perceiving it as a negative and perception is a lot of times reality or at least what matters the most. So doesn't seem like a very smart move by Mark Murphy unless it was intentional. I think he was just trying to make the point of like, hey, we're trying to figure this out with him. We're trying to sort through things with him. But it's not that easy to figure out exactly what he wants or exactly what we can do to make it right. That's the sense I got from it. I'm not defending Mark Murphy. I'm just telling you that's my two cents on what went down there. Tux takes. Transactions include Dolphins giving linebacker Jerome Baker a three-year $39 million deal, the Niners signing lineman Sinio Kelamete, the Eagles signing Richard Rodgers again, and the Saints making Drew Brees retirement. Well, it's now officially official, whatever that means. So Jerome Baker, you know, I, I didn't understand why he didn't go till the third round. The guy was athletic, great in space, made a ton of plays at Ohio State. I was surprised he fell to the third round, and it was a mistake because he's been the Dolphins' leading tackle the last couple of years. He's been phenomenal. And after his third year, they give him $13 million a year. I was better than the draft people on that one because I had him higher. Uh, Kelamete, Niners realize they need depth now that Justin School went down. The Eagles still appear to be poised to trade Zach Ertz. Hasn't happened yet, but that's all the rumors you read about in here. Richard Rodgers actually did a lot of really positive things for the Eagles last year. I'm surprised other teams didn't try to sign him. Rodgers had a solid year. I think he's a decent number two tight end. And the Eagles were able to get him back. Maybe they had let him know they were going to get him back at some point. And right, with Breeze, it was just a procedural move to get him to be officially retired. They had to wait till after June 2nd for cap purposes. Tux takes. All right, two more pieces of information. Giants cornerback Sam Beal pled guilty to guns, uh, to gun-related charges. And Le'Veon Bell says that he would never play for Andy Reid again. Although after that, he apologized for the way he said it. So for Beal, I mean, I don't even know what he did, but it's not a good look, right? Pleading guilty to two gun-related charges doesn't sound good to me. I don't even know the details. I don't need to. He pled guilty. So doesn't sound good. As for Le'Veon Bell, I feel like we've talked about this guy a lot over the years. Uh, going back to when he turned down the Steelers the first year on the franchise tag and then the second year and, you know, then he sat out. Um, there's, not a, there's not a better way to say it other than he has made a number of poor business decisions. So it's his life, and he might have every reason to do some of the things he does. So kudos to him if he's doing what he wants to do with his life. But it's impossible to go back and do the math after the year he sat out and say he made the best business decision sitting out that year for the Steelers. It's also impossible to make any argument that criticizing Andy Reid publicly is a smart business decision if, in fact, Le'Veon Bell wants to continue playing pro football. How does that help you? And by the way, I had a tweet over the weekend, Bri, at Ross Tucker NFL. Some awesome donut-related social posts, by the way. Like, get on board on social media. One, You got to be on one of them. Instagram, Twitter, make fun of me for the Facebook thing. I don't care. You got to be on one of them at least, probably multiple. And you got to go ahead – and you got to follow me so you get some of these awesome, like the donuts, the clams. Clams are now one of the things that at the top five food for me in terms of if I was in an eating contest, I could have a thousand steamed clams and not even blink. Look at my eyes on YouTube, youtube.com slash Ross Tucker NFL. I could have a thousand steamed clams and not even blink. Just be straight like this the whole time. I'm telling you, it's reality. And the reality is for Le'Veon Bell, I tweeted this, Bri. I, I think Le'Veon Bell is the first guy I've ever heard publicly criticize Andy Reid. Even guys he cut, guys he benched, 
They still like it. They still love Andy Reid, not Le'Veon Bell. First one I've ever heard say that. Uh, two more interesting things, Bri, I noticed this morning. Nick Mullen signing with the Eagles. They had cut Jamie Newman. Evidently, he wasn't very good. And Nick Mullins is a guy. Field Yates had a crazy stat. Second NFL history. Most passing yards, his first 16 starts. Kind of ridiculous that Nick Mullins was still available. Seems like a pretty nice, inexpensive backup. And then Stephon Gilmore didn't show up for Patriots minicamp. I don't, I don't really get that. He's injured and rehabbing anyway. So I guess he's making a point. But he's not even going to go on the field. He's just going to rehab $94,000 that they have to find him unless he was excused. And maybe he was excused. We don't know. Other than that, definitely check out the NFC North draft breakdown on today's College Draft Podcast. Emory Hunt has been killing it, going over every single draft choice. So if you are a Lions fan like Norm, one of our patrons, if you are a Packers fan like Grades, another patron, or a Bears fan, or a Lions fan, I already said them, who's the other team? Vikings, like Lizzo, you need to go ahead and listen to the College Draft Podcast today. We went over every draft pick for your whole division. Why not? They're your guys. He even mentions undrafted guys. He's incredible. Shout-outs to Pizza Boy Brewing, Sport of Culture, Vision Comics with an X, HumanHeadNYC.com, surprise guest on the Even Money Podcast. He's hilarious and informative. I think we're done here. Thanks for listening to the Ross Tucker Football Podcast. Make sure to also subscribe to the Fantasy Feasts, Even Money, Business of Sports, and College Draft. All available at Apple Podcasts, RossTucker.com, or wherever podcasts can be found. A lot of times on the show, I mentioned DraftKings. Here's what you need to know. You got to be 21 or older, New Jersey, Indiana, or Pennsylvania only. New customers only. Restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details. Gambling problem? Call 100Gambler or in Indiana, one 800 with it. By the way, if what I was talking about included a deposit bonus, it doesn't always, sometimes it does. Deposit bonus requires 25 times playthrough, and deposit bonuses are paid out in site credit.